gentlemen, you are both drunk on cosmic wine. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Mark Sylvester. And I'm Dr. Richard Schulman. This, this is, is All Psych. No. See, could you hear her? We yeah. are officially live and on tape. But All right. um, kind of a special, special week. One, we've got our co-host filling in for the good Dr. Richard Schulman, Jacqueline Stover. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged sword because you happen to forget more about this than I'll ever know. So you're really the expert. So you're kind of a guest, but not really. Not really. Yeah. So I got a million questions. Okay. This is one of Shoot. the few times like when researching for a show, I got overwhelmed. Like, yeah. ah! Where's Jackie? I need help. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just ironical. We work right across the hall from each other, but I feel, still feel like I only scratched the surface of what you do, not just as a yeah. massage therapist, but as a healer in general. So sure. tell my mom and anyone else who's <clears throat> watching, what, what got you into what you do? And how did that dovetail into martial arts uh, principles, which we're talking about today? Well, that's really kind of my foundation. Like it all started with martial arts. Like that's, that's my core. <laughs> that's my core being right there. Oh, and I, um, I kind of went off and did a bunch of real estate stuff, contracting, and I kind of went back to my roots of martial arts. And that gets into alternative healing as well. So that's how I got into massage. I just kind of actually did a 180 from what I was doing. How old were you but, when you got into martial arts? Like, did you do that as a kid in, in grade school? Or? I did. I was actually eight nice. when I got in. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's that why it's so foundational. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just becomes part of who you are. Yeah. More than a practice. So. Yeah. It's it's sort of a philosophy. I, I think the only thing I that comes to mind that I compare it to one I've talked on the show before having a near-death experience when I was six and kind of yeah. how that overlaid and shaped my development and understanding of my place in the world and and yada yada I think people who have been in the military and have been in battle or are used or are in some sort of like yeah. law enforcement they have a specific mentality and principles Absolutely. Um, there's a, like there's a little bit of overlap with the military chain of command and structure and and kind of being part of a bigger whole. Other yeah. than that, it's maybe closest to a philosophy, a religion, spirituality. But I, I just want to hop right in and and you know tell you it, it, the martial arts principles that you learned since childhood as a way of life. What are what would you say if you could reduce it to the main core principles or values across all martial arts, or maybe one particular type that resonated with you? Um, I'd say like respect, discipline, humility is also a big part of it. And you know, <laughs> I'd say those three things and the indomitable spirit, that's also essential for all of them. And I mean, that applies to life in general. I mean, being resilient is huge. Certainly. I, th I think now more than ever, everyone yeah. could relate, especially in the last two, three years, to Absolutely. just feeling like we're being attacked from all yeah. directions at all time. Um, and there's a real opportunity, I think, in the evolution of consciousness for people to kind of have a Neo in the Matrix waking up moment there is Absolutely. no spoon or being able to stop a lot of these bullets that are coming at us. Uh, people just are exhausted and they're, and yeah. they're hopeless and they're tired. Um, they're angry. And these core principles, I mean, whether you're getting them from a religious practice Where? or like I said, some sort of chain of command. Um, I, well, we, what we want to do here is have that through healing. So what exactly, exactly is an indomitable spirit and how do I get one? Are they for sale on Amazon? <laughs> that would be amazing, but no, it's just something that you, uh, develop, I guess, through practice 
just like anything else. It's like a meditation practice. Your stillness, like you get better and better at it. You're able to drop out, you know, almost just like that. So but indomitable something. spirit, you just keep persevering. I mean, whatever comes at you, you just keep going. And so it's, kind of, it's, I guess you could call it kind of an attitude as well. Right. Like a perspective. Yeah. Like never give up, never surrender. Exactly. Exactly. Um, kind of like Joe Dirt. <laughs> You know, he only had yeah. <laughs> he only had one moment of doubt when the swing set broke and dropped him on his ass. Yeah, um, but yeah, he had a, a indomitable spirit. <laughs> There's a funny yeah. line in that in that movie with Den- when Dennis Miller's like interviewing him, and he's like, "How do you stay so painfully optimistic?" You know, they they think yes. you know if anything, they're making fun of them for it in the movie. But I think it, that movie kind of came out in a time where you could make fun of that. Now people right. want that. They're yeah. seeking that. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're saying, please give me a refuge. Please give me a safe place in my mind because I don't even feel safe in my home anymore. Yeah. So Indomitable Spirit really has more to do with that daily practice, a shift in your attitude, catching yourself when you say something like, well, this isn't going to work out or, oh, I'm so stupid. I, I forgot, you know, listen to what comes out of your mouth. Pay attention Absolutely. to your thoughts. Uh, you are, you are indomitable yes. in the spirit. And uh, yeah. yeah. It's I, like I said in our meeting the other night, it's always a pleasure <laughs> being around you because yeah, there's I don't know if there's two types of people in this world, but there's cer- certainly two interactions and that's energy givers and energy takers and suckers and um, how much of each you do is sort of what makes us all unique. But some people spend a lot more time giving their energy and attracting others. Other people spend a lot more time being negative, nihilistic, isolative. Um, Absolutely. Sucking the life out of you. Yeah. And as long as you keep up with your self-care and do all the things, like you'll be able to keep giving. And that's a big part of it too. So you don't run out. You never want to run out. So and there's we a- have that ability to go back to center, just like with the meditation practice or anything i mean moving meditation too some people think that you have to do all these fancy meditations and everything like that it's just not true so but it does require a certain discipline i am um, oh my I goodness was, yes i've been working on quotes for 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 our, uh, our marketing folks yeah um and i found one that i really like that i think relates to the discipline um, and it's by a guy named Jim Rohn, which a lot of people won't remember, but he was Tony. A lot of people know Tony Robbins, the motiv- well, right. he doesn't like to be called motivational speaker, but let's just call right. him that. Don't tell him, uh, cause he could buy my whole block and then evict me. Um, but it was, it was, uh, Jim Rohn was his mentor and you, you still to this day hear him talk about Jim Rohn who's since passed away. But one of the things that he said is if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. And yeah. if you don't, you'll find an excuse. Absolutely. And it, it's sort of that binary thinking. And you get to this yeah. like binary moment where, hey, am I going to have an indomitable spirit or am I going to be a victim? Am I going to be a, a doer or am yeah. I going to be a receiver and sucker? Um, and people want that. They want to they do that. They just don't know how. And I, I, that's what I right. love. I've always been fascinated with martial arts. I've never been any good at it. I've not had really like the body for a lot of the disciplines that I've tried, but I would say the one that resonates the most with me is Tai Chi because it tends practice. to be, well, it's more like balance than it is yeah. flexibility. Yeah. And I am a lot more in tune with balance, you know, formerly water skiing and all of that. Plus I'm not yeah. flexible. <laughs> But it gets you into your body and you're aware of that and you're moving your energy. Yeah. And that's very important. And Worf from uh, Star Trek Next Generation does a lot of Tai Chi. So there you go. <laughs> I try to model my I have no idea. <laughs> him and Pat Cap. There are a lot of Star Trek references in this show. You should know that as the guest host. <laughs> Oops. I got action figures over there I'll start playing with. If it really that's fine. Go for it. <laughs> but... Um, 
how does it relate to meditation or, or, or energy work in general? Well, we started every class with meditation Okay. in my school. Like it was a big part of it as far as being able to control your breath and drop out of your mind and get into your body. That's the start of everything because to be able to flow like you need to, to do the physical movements, you have to master that first. So I don't know. I'm picturing like a karate kid or something. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where you, you, you kind of honor your opponent before and after. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe opponent's not even the right word. I don't know. Your dance partner. Yeah. It's it, fighting can actually really be like dancing. So, um, but I realized, yeah, you, you meditate before every, every class, every lesson. And I'm sure not all schools do. I went to a very traditional school. So that makes a big difference too. What school a is lot that? Of, a martial arts school? A martial arts school. Yeah, I started in Taekwondo. And then um, evolved to Hapkido as well. Which is um, great. When are we going to get the thing like Neo where, where we can just plug it in and say, I know Jiu-Jitsu. Whoa. That would be awesome. But then you take away from that discipline and that practice. And oh, snap. Mind over matter. Oh. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that as far as like, I didn't start teaching until I was six years in. To my so the practice. knowledge is a small part of it. It's more the practice, Absolutely. the discipline, practice, the yeah. energy work your attitude we talked about the discipline did I just say that twice yeah where does responsibility fit into it you know I hear a lot about responsibility and I'm thinking like responsible for what like okay I know Kung and I know Fu now I'm a lethal (laughs) weapon I have to be responsible for who I uh judo chop right is that what that is yeah we were taught responsibility because you learn these skills And I mean, not a lot of people out there really know how to fight, you know? So we were taught like, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. That's what we were taught. So you don't go out and, you know, you know, start fighting anybody, but you also have responsibility for yourself, your family, your friends, for people that can't defend themselves. So the responsibility is sort of like, knowing when to use your training absolutely and that doesn't even necessarily apply to fighting but it can be verbally as well there are a lot of people who are yeah absolutely absolutely i mean bullying can take on a lot of forms especially these days i i you know i don't have any kids today (laughs) they have a lot to handle it wasn't as big when i was in school i feel like but um even verbal abuse, you know, you step in and you, you know, you can handle it and help someone else that's in need. What the hell does humility have to do with it? And why, why does humility even come into the philosophy and values of martial arts? Humility, as far as you're going to go out in the world and you're going to be very unassuming, you're not going to necessarily broadcast like, oh, well, hey, you know, I could kick your ass (laughs) type of thing. You're humble about what you do. And, you know, that's, that's huge. You're not going to go out and brag about, you know, any of it. Where does, where do you think that comes from? Because I feel like that humility goes back. Like I I was reading about Ronin and, and all kinds of these ancient martial arts practices and, and warriors and stuff like that. And it did seem like humility was a big part of it. And humility is great. It's like altruism. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering what's the, what's the pragmatic value of it? I, I get it's kind of a core principle or a philosophy of martial arts, but it's almost more of a spirituality. Like it's trying to make you a, a better person, sort of like the indomitable spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, that's how we were taught. It goes beyond you know, the studio and your practice there, you know, so we learned that from a very young age, like this applies to your life in every aspect. So the humility, I mean, that's huge. You can apply that anywhere. And it's just, um, it allows you to also be more observant, I think. How how so? Because when you're more reserved with what you're saying and you're not focused on, oh, hey, I do this. 
I do this and I do this. You're you're taking in at what okay. people are saying. You're observing everything. Your uh, their movements, all of it. You take in everything around you, almost like a hyper awareness. Okay, so you're not saying at all what I was thinking or, or get, uh, getting, but I, yeah, so it's it's sort of a, you know, this reminds me a little bit of almost like firearms training and, um, you know, for civilians, because it's a lot more than just, oh, hey, learning gun safety or what type of guns or, or laws. There's a lot more of an attitude of protectorship, like, Yes. yes, with great power comes great responsibility. If you have the training to use lethal force to harm, maim, or, you know, yeah. God forbid, kill somebody, uh, you better do it as a last resort. Exactly. Whereas yes. somebody who tries to jump you at the gas station with the gun or something, and then yeah. you're wrestling over that, you, you really don't have any training background. You're more likely to get shot yourself, hurt yourself kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, I what I was thinking was I, it reminded me of the Hippocratic Oath, which I took really seriously. I absolutely I didn't feel I didn't feel like a lot of maybe that's not a nice fair thing to say, but I didn't feel like a lot of my classmates took that uh, to heart as much as I did. And humility is a big principle of the Hippocratic Oath. Ultimately, yes. what it says is, hey you're you're allowed to sit here in 2022 and receive knowledge going dating back literally thousands of years or 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 at least if you look at the hippocratic model since yeah. the time of hippocrates and you only have the ability to learn this crap because you've only seen farther because you stood on the, the shoulders of giants kind of thing that's yes. what I was thinking, the humility in martial arts. Like a lot of these principles go back so far. So far. And Absolutely. then knowledge itself yes. is yes. a privilege. It's a gift. It's on the blood, yes. sweat, and tears of, of, of all those your yes. ancestors, all those that came before yeah. you, the accumulation of time and all of that. And that's very humbling if you think Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's kind of the way I think about medical knowledge now i often don't agree with all of it or understand all of it or to my satisfaction because maybe we haven't gotten to that point but there's still that core uh i don't know gratitude sanctity humility i guess is the better word humility is great and that can be also you can view it as that versus you know ego yeah you know, you do what you do because you said it's a privilege. It is a privilege. <clears throat> it's an honor and it's to be of service. It's not to yeah. feed your ego. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's reminding me uh, of some other principles there. Um, one of the things we talked about before the show was that concept of being in your body. What, oh, is, yeah. that? what does that mean? Pretend and like I don't know what that That's something that's very means. hard to describe because I guess I'm just so used to being able to drop into that or to just be it quite often. Um, it's just that coherence where you really kind of drop out of your mind, you, you know, because it's busy all the time. It's easy to get lost up here, but you just really drop into your body and you're able to flow and you feel things differently. And that's when your intuition can really kick in as well. So being present in the moment, aware Absolutely. of your body's condition or position or proprioception All or just the, <clears throat> like with Tai Chi, to me, there's a, there's a hypnosis, there's a, there's a meditation in, in the, uh, the routine yeah. of the moves, I guess. It's very moving meditation. Yeah. Absolutely. But I guess yoga is as well. Uh, I, there's a lot of different Yoga is types. as well. It's a great discipline, yeah. And, and with not, martial arts, sometimes the movements are just more intense, but you're doing essentially the same thing. You're harness, harnessing your body and that energy to be able to do some wild physical feats. <laughs> what, are, what are different types of disciplines? Like you mentioned Kung Pao Chicken, or I mean Kung Fu. <laughs> you mentioned uh, Aikido Island or Aikido. Aikido, we mentioned yeah, jiu-jitsu, jiu jitsu. judo. We met, There's we met all kinds judo. of different disciplines. Where did and they those come I can't from? really 
I can't really speak a lot about those because I'm not familiar with those. Both but of where did my they come from? Were South, mine were South Korean. Okay, so it has to do with either like <clears throat> the time or the country of yes. origin a lot yep. of times? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I was ask, I was asking for a friend that uh, you know right reviewers <laughs> here. Yeah, and that um, goes back to you know having the privilege of training under just amazing people who are actual masters of their art. So those are the ones that you see on TV that impress me, the ones that can, you know, stop their breathing or sit in a block yeah. of ice or, you know, touch you with it's one incredible. finger and blow you across the room. <laughs> right. How do they do that? What's their secret? Are they channeling so much power and chi and they can manipulate and direct it? They can manipulate energy. Yeah. Yeah. And mind over matters. You know, it sounds so simple. It's hard harder to attain it but it is very what, powerful what wisdom do you think the masters have um because i think of them as like the i don't know kung fu or martial arts nirvana they're the best yeah. of the best they're the best of what we think human ability is capable of yeah what can they do better than just say, I don't know, your run-of-the-mill black belt uh, karate. Let's say control. Control of their mind, their body, all of it. Absolutely. Uh, energy. I mean, especially health. your mind. I think that's huge. Are they, do you think that they have a closer relationship with a religion or a spirituality? Like I think of Taoism or Confucianism, or Buddhism, um, a yeah, lot of times going French, along yeah. with martial arts, right? What, Absolutely. How Absolutely. does that, how does that fit in? Like, if they're better Buddhist, does that make them a better master? Or is it, it can they do that with their martial arts training alone? Or is that a dumb question that you would like to pass on? No, I mean, you can, I, I believe that you can do that with martial arts alone, because they're very similar. I mean, to me, they're the same. I mean, a lot of disciplines are like, if you boil them down to what they are at their core, you know. So what is Taoism? They're very similar. Since Taoism. That's a great question. I love that question because <laughs> it makes me so excited because it's oh, the Tao. You, you can't really name it. <laughs> well, I think love of Dharma. It. I think of Dharma when I think of Taoism and I don't know why. Maybe because they both don't really start with a yeah. D but sound like that. Right. <laughs> But it is, it's just, it's the flow. And it's just that knowing that nobody can actually, like we try to describe it in so many different ways, but at the end of the day, and it's, it's an experience that you can't really describe and just that deep knowing. Is it kind of like being in the flow of, yes. of the universe? And yeah. Dharma is, a, is more like your path, I guess, your particular yeah. path. Uh, uh, I don't, I forgot a lot of uh, Confucianism, but I like to uh, boil that down into like what I got from that was morality for morality's sake. Really? What is morality's yeah. sake? I mean, maybe that right? ties Morali back to humility. I mean, basically, or... it's essentially be a good person just to be a good person. I mean, not for, you know, to be saved or, you know, to, you know, achieve nirvana, just to be a decent human being, just for the sake of being a decent human being. I think most people would, would struggle with that. Like, what? Yeah. Be nice for no reason? <laughs> be good for no reason? Like, what? Yeah, I want to a lot of people back. need a reason, like a reward, like, right. you know, to achieve it. But, you know, at the end of the day, what do you really need? Well, I see two rewards. One you're going to live a better life. You're going to have, well, it's going to help yeah. you, you yeah. know, that we've talked sure. about studies where, uh, you know, if you smile, there's a measurable release of, I guess, serotonin. Well, yeah, it was serotonin, but if you watch someone else smile, you get the same release of serotonin. So it's kind of, I always think of that as, Hey, there's a physiologic advantage, by, there you, go. you know, like yeah. Mr. Van Driesen said in Beavis and Butthead, I think you'll find that doing good <laughs> will have you feeling good. Yes. 
Um, and then there's a second component, which I think is a deep, dark secret of the universe. Well, it's not really dark. Well, you need to bring it out to the light. And I'll give everyone a minute to sit down because this is going to blow your skirt up. <laughs> We're all connected. Right? So if I punch you in the face, I'm only hurting myself. If I hang Absolutely. on to negative karma, negative energy, uh, it's drinking poison, expecting someone else to die. It's no matter how you slice it. Yeah, that's the that's the real I think of the reason to be nice for no for for nice's sake. Um, it does affect others. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of the things I struggled with the most when I lived in Miami is how the average person struggles to receive that. Yeah, um, which I think is oh, sad. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you hold the door for somebody that I grew up in Sarasota, there was a lot yeah. of older folks back then. I was taught like basic respect, you know, don't stand yeah. the door in an old fogey space kind of thing. Yeah. If you hold the door for someone in Miami, they won't walk through it. They'll look at you like, what are you doing, buddy? What are you up to? What are you up oh, to? Oh yeah. And I don't think that's a cultural thing or depends how you define culture. I'm I I've never been able to describe why that is or what that is but how does that tie into martial arts is there is there an import is there a philosophy or an importance on receiving um respect yeah respect and politeness are both huge too and in martial arts you all respect each other it doesn't matter what rank you are you know, if you're a six similar, degree black belt, you're going to show a white belt respect. Similar to, again, That's just how it is. similar to the military command. Yeah, respect. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The closest I can relate as I was, uh, well, I think I lied about my age to get in. I was 16. You're supposed to be 17 to get in the Coast Guard uh, auxiliary. And I don't, I I don't know anyone in my family. Well, that's not totally true. My dad was technically in the Navy, but let's be honest. He was a doctor and he was stationed at the U S Capitol taking care of congressmen. Yeah. Um, my stepdad was an air force person, but he was a doctor that just whatever war, I don't think he did anything, certainly nothing, yeah. no combat or anything like that. So I literally know very little about not only martial arts, but the military. None of my family really went into the military. And so I was really surprised that the Coast Guard auxiliary and that attitude, that philosophy, there's a preservation of command structure. Yes. There's a fellowship. It's a connectedness. Yes. And probably what we're struggling with the most right now is feeling connected to each other. Now, we don't Absolutely. know that that's what we're lacking. And we don't know that that's what we desperately need to seek out. We don't consciously know like I am you and you are me and both of our digital yeah. reflections are staring at each other across right? the classic <laughs> great when I think about it <laughs> but that's the closest I can really relate that and, and Tai Chi just how it uh, quiets the mind centers the mind gets you m meditating on on these principles whether that's discipline responsibility attitude spirit um energy healing uh respect yeah. i think is a big part of it um i always this is a super hot button topic right now but again thinking about um even uh uh firearms training there's a there's a healthy respect for for it's kind of like a cl club or something almost like the police or military but at the same time, it's so much more. It's a, it's a way of life, like you said. It's something that's Absolutely. been great in you since you were we we last. Absolutely, yeah. And it, I mean, people, you're right. Where I've noticed, Thank you. people don't know how to respond to it. <laughs> I know you like it. You're right. <laughs> Good job. No, but butter people don't know how to respond. Like I'll even, you know, try to look at people. I always greet people. You look at them right in the eye and say hello or, you know, good morning. Like a lot of people just look right down at the ground and totally ignore you. Or, you know, yeah. like you said, holding doors for people. It broke my heart one day. Yeah. I went to the Panera drive through on my way in here and I got to the window and, you know, I'm giving them my card and the girls up there were just like, no, you know, it's free. You're the only person that's been kind to us today. And I was like, 
that just makes me so sad. They said yeah, they had a bunch of too. cruel customers. And I was like, that, that just breaks my heart. That's the world we're living in. <laughs> well, Where, you are, I mean, you're a, they didn't even look like they could drive. I was like, who's going to be rude? You're you? a beacon <laughs> in this world. In that regard, you're, you're a light. And I think, I think, I believe people will wake up. I believe that yeah. it's got to get worse before it gets better. better. Maybe not from here. Cause I think it's still pretty bad. Um, yeah. but it's a subtlety and maybe you and I are more empathetic or sensitive to that sure. energy. I was really surprised at, at a lot of people that do quite well in a culture like that, you know, New York city, screaming out the window, giving people the finger, you jerk, you know, yeah. threatening. And yeah. then people get to office and they're all like, <laughs> like nothing happened. That yeah. type of interaction would stick on me a little longer. Yeah. Um, so maybe some people are more receptive to it, but if you really looked at, at the philosophy of we're all one, I think that would change very quickly. Um, I was hoping the, the loneliness and the isolation and all of that, I was hoping would bring people to reconnect with their neighbors, reconnect with their families. But there's so much like political divide and and, and, the, and, the, and the last two years with the virus thingy and and of course world well, peace. yeah and at the core like that's very emotionally manipulative and to go with this like the martial arts skills like i'm kind of immune to all of that and i stay pretty much outside of all of it but people aren't equipped mm -mm. to be able to handle that they don't have the coping skills you know and they don't have that kind of resilience to be like oh i need to step back rather they're just responding reacting well, I've, I've never seen in my lifetime, I've never seen a challenge kind of put forth like this where yeah. it really tested people's toolbox oh, yeah. and their resources. Yeah. And not very many people did well. You know, the, the people who haven't left yeah. their home in seven, 10 years, they loved it. They were like, oh, hey, welcome to my world. This is where I live. Like, isolate from everybody. Wear, right. wear a padded suit. <laughs> this is my but, sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, they're, that, those are rare, though. I mean, easily yep. less yep. than 5 3% of people. Um, I feel like maybe the people that, um, I don't know. It, it, it was, oh, well, I've talked before on the show that, um, folks in recovery actually did better during the pandemic. Now, people who were not that. in good recovery, whether they were addicts and alcoholics or got into alcohol and drugs during the pandemic as a, as a stressor. Oh, I just said the P word. Um, <laughs> hopefully they don't block us. Um, it's all good. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they did much better because they had some of the Structure. tools and resources, um, not only accountability and structure, but the principles of recovery, there's a lot Absolutely. of, you know, like humility. There's another overlapping principle. The practice yeah. and the discipline uh, and the responsibility uh, to ask for help, to lean on another is not a foreign concept to them. And they did yeah. what they did. I would say they did better than the average person. Yeah. So it's probably why you've done that well. And, and I, I don't know if that means everyone should go out and learn how to spell Kung Fu. Uh, but no, they certainly yeah. could take sure. up martial arts. And I heard you're going to be teaching some classes someday if we can get that's, our... that's the plan. That's the yeah. plan. Not sure what all that's going to look like yet, but it's in the works. Well, it'll look just like Star Trek when Worf teaches to Tai Chi right. class. <laughs> we'll all wear the white we robes and stuff. Yeah, there we go. I like I it. I forget how you do the hand thing. Oh, that was great. Wasn't there yeah. some hand thing? <laughs> depends on what you're in yeah all right here's a now we always go down the rabbit hole in this show so this is the part where we go down the rabbit hole let's do it tell me about mind over matter so if i get like a double black belt will i be able to move things with my mind that's really what i'm looking for or we didn't work on that as much but the I mean, a lot of people, some motivational speakers do it too, as far as like, we would do like the walking over hot coals yeah, and totally stuff wrong. like that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, I mean, and it was kind of like military stuff. Like sometimes our classes would be just meditation and lecture and we would just have to stand there and my instructor would come around and, you know, do different pressure points on us. 
and we just have to stay in there. Like, you know, I mean, it would hurt, <laughs> but you just, you know, you dealt with it mind over matter. You know, there's no pain there. You just keep going. Like you the whole verb it in your stance. Like, doesn't martial arts, I mean, there's a lot of um, testing, it seems like in martial arts. There's a lot of practice. There's a lot of, there's a lot of testing. But if you have yep. a class or you have a teacher or you have a, um, a master, kind of again people most everyone's seen karate kid both the original um or for our younger generation the remake but yeah. it, it's so much more than that there's a lot of yes. um i guess application of of the spirituality spiritual principles uh leading by an example oh, um, yes yeah i'm glad you brought that up too well, I, I kind of feel like that's what you do is you, you're, you're, you are yourself who you want to be and yeah. have a really good shield for all the arrows that are coming at you just as the same as they oh, are yeah. anyone else. And probably oh, yeah. more so, I wouldn't even know. I think, you know, for the person that, that one, it's a cool thing that the people at, at the drive through recognized that it sucked being treated like garbage yeah. all day yeah. and they gave back to you they kind of that's cool that, that was really sweet was really cool. that was so sweet yeah but at the same time you never know how much you're affecting people around you like even, oh, if, you, exactly. even if you say hi to somebody and they yeah. don't, you don't think they hear you and they're looking at their phone or they're looking down or they look at you and don't say anything or they yeah. slam the door in your face um you never really know how that changes someone's day. Exactly. You're not, you're not really authorized to be that judge. You're more authorized to, to be yourself, to be who you want to be, to be true to yourself and to be that example. You know, I saw a great bumper sticker, be the change you want to see in the world. Don't just sit back and bitch about it. We got plenty of people doing that. It's not. Yeah. And really be it. And we've got a lot of, you know, talkers too. And that goes back to Taoism and martial arts practices as well, because that got drilled into us. Well, what's a quote? I believe it's Walk talkers walk. don't know, or the, those that talk don't know. And those that know don't talk. I like that. That's yeah. so yin yang. Uh, it <laughs> sums a lot of things up circular. right there. <laughs> no, but there's a, there's a Confuciusness to it too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, because we got a lot of people out there. And I think that's a dangerous thing, too, that are just kind of spewing out information, but not actually living it. You know, at kind of an extension on that. One of my favorite quotes, I think it was Lao Tzu, is it's wise to know the ways of one's adversaries. Um, and you could interpret that a lot of different ways. I, t I interpret that as really no understand where someone who's your opponent or an enemy yes. or disagrees with you on an issue know where they stand know where they're coming from I yeah. think the biggest problem today is we are we, are, we have this like lightning fast fuse and if you don't fit whatever model I'm in oh. at that time moment project you're, you're either canceled or, yeah I'm not <laughs> oh, I'm not talking to that That's side of my family crazy anymore. yeah and maybe yeah. that's just, hey, when we stress, we regress. And as a society, we're over the top. But yeah. I, I just don't see how it can get shorter without riots and stuff <laughs> breaking yeah. out. Oh, so yeah. how, do we, how do we change that culture at the, at the Thanksgiving table? You know, uh, how do you change uh, other people's interaction or viewpoint of the, of the world? can you even do that more than just being an example that, that i don't know i mean to me it's always about kind of grassroots movements and it's one-on-one -on -one i just totally teed circles. that up for you like what's that i just totally teed that up you were gonna be like come take a martial arts class that'll fix you well that too but i mean you just never know it could be somebody you know you might inspire somebody that you're next to in line you're yeah. like, oh, hey, you know, somebody might be, oh, you seem to have your stuff together. What do you do? 
you know, I'll have clients ask me, well, what do you do? Like, I, like I do all the stuff that I tell you to do. <laughs> and you're like, well, <laughs> you know, I do the stretching. I do the, you know, <laughs> like I would never to tell a client to do something that I don't practice myself. Otherwise I would just be a hypocrite. <laughs> but look at the, look at the fact, A, that you even remember that interaction at the drive through B, how it made you feel, not only in terms of like, wow, that's sad. I feel sorry for those people. Yeah. But also, wow, okay, they're telling me they that they appreciate it. They need that. Yeah. They miss that. They want that. They're unhappy without that. Uh, yeah. That's a big deal. And, and yeah. it's just, it's a tiny, who cares if they're giving you a, a coffee or they're giving you a freaking microwave or, or a brand new SUV. Yeah. The intent is the exact same. Yeah. And to me, that's really what, what's amazing so yeah when you see that happening in your own life I think it just empowers you more and more and more which then creates a positive cycle of attraction of other people and them saying hey yeah I want what she has yeah how do I get there how, do, how did you do it uh because I think most people aren't so naive they're like well you know she's young and born with a silver spoon in her mouth she's never had a problem in her life or carefree I don't I think most people realize like hey we all kind of are walking parallel paths we all yes. share collective consciousness we all you know struggle with the same heartaches and letdowns and losses and uh, suffering in some form or another and either even if you don't re realize that consciously unconsciously that when you see someone who's kind of <laughs> got their shit together you go I want what they have yeah. and they're a lot more open then to you and your sure. teachings your example your philosophies your practices your attitudes your advice yeah yeah I'm always amazed, like with therapists, they've studied all these different types of therapy and, you know, oh, is CBT better than DBT, IPT, uh, innervative, all of it, just all, what the, what mattered more than anything was whether or not you liked the person. Exactly. Whether you trust them, whether you're going to, yes. you know, model, use them as a mentor or listen to their advice. So is that, is that an artifact of your practice or is that who you set out and try to be in the world as a result of the practice as a result of the practice absolutely absolutely so you're kind of like james bond when they're like oh my gosh that's so awesome and he's like oh it's just it's just the training kicking in or maybe it's tom, Ar <laughs> tom arnold in true lies pretty much yeah it's all about the training do you think a lot of martial arts principles when you are, you must be challenged. Life must happen to you. I, we just said that. I know that you've dealt with great loss and adversity. Absolutely. And that helps build humility and wisdom. But do you think yes. of martial arts or they just sort of like ingrained and permeate you because of the years of training and experience? Yeah, really just becomes part of who you are. And I don't like think about it really when I'm going to be speaking about it in terms, you know, like that. But I mean, even just recently with my accident, that's part of why I was able to, you know, keep going the way that I did. People uh, would come in here. They didn't even know I had a brain injury. <laughs> so that's good. Just, yeah. So you just keep going. Do you think that martial arts helps? I mean, we kind of touched on it a little bit in terms of being in your body, but do you yeah. think martial arts kind of like meditation really draws you at, not only out of your problems and, oh, it's this time and I got this to do and laundry or whatever. Do you think that it really helps you be present in the moment? Kind of that Eckhart told, uh, power of now or, or, or Ram Dass be here now I kind of feel like martial yes. arts they're they're like cats you, you yeah. don't you think cat I think cats are dumb and I'm not a cat person and I don't really think there's a whole lot going on upstairs if I'm wrong it's the exact opposite kind of like you said right. it's so much going on <laughs> yeah that 
because you see ceilings collapse and a cat can be like asleep and somehow they get out of there faster than an airbag. I'm like, these, these aren't, you know, squirrels here. They're, yeah. they're really kind of um, hyper sampling the same reality. It's almost like time moves in more slow motion. Same thing as in the matrix, right? When he slows down time and all of that. I feel I feel like that's what's happening with masters when you see them in battles, almost kind of like when Neo can stop multiple agents, you know, with one hand, not really paying attention. You can't do that unless you're sampling time at a higher frequency rate. If you're not like hyper aware of the power of that moment and now. I, oh, am yeah. I making that up or just more? No, so and everything feels different when you're in that space. And the real challenge is a lot of people, like when you start to progress, is you're able to do that faster and faster to where you're able to drop into that space. So you can almost turn it on, turn it off. And that's the real goal is not to have you know, your space at home, that's good for practice and where everything around you is nice and you've got your meditation music and your incense or whatever. But the real challenge is being able to hold that when you're walking through life. Because life is far from perfect. <laughs> but well, to be able to hold that center or to be able to get off and then come back to center as quick as possible is so important. It does seem like modern life is a perfect analogy for yeah. a stranger or even someone who's familiar with your, your moves and your weaknesses constantly coming at you, throwing a, oh, yeah. a kick or, or a punch or a headbutt. It is. You got to deflect and block and move. Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost to where it's a dance where you're moving through life and dealing with all of these things, but you're trying to stay in that center. That's the real goal. That's the real mastery. It's not like, oh, I have to be here and stay here all day and my environment has to be perfect, that's not the real mastery. Like the real mastery is just when you drop into it. Like I'm, I'm still working on it, especially with the, the brain injury. I still have some work to go to where I used to be, but I'm getting there, and especially with Nichols' help. I'll, I'll be able to achieve that a little bit quicker, I think, because that was amazing um, doing the neurofeedback. But it's just like massage and I can relate it to that. Like everything can be going on outside my room or I could be dealing with some kind of personal crisis. But when I walk in my room, boom, well, I'm present with my client. Impresses me with you with clients as you are very present. I mean, it, it's maybe kind of simple to say, well, in, any massage therapist has got to be present. And actually, not really. Matter of fact, oh so I've talked to some that are like, you know, an hour goes by really fast for me because my mind's elsewhere. And I'm thinking like, well, that's interesting. I, I've had kind of a similar maybe experience playing music. And then you kind of come yeah. back to your body and you're like, whoa, or automatic yeah. driving, you know, you, your hands know where sure. you're driving. And then you're kind of like, yeah. oh, I'm already here. They're, yeah. But to me, they're missing so much of like what you oh do. Oh my gosh. Because... Yeah. You know, you don't just do massage therapy. You re help release emotions that are stored in the body. You can only do that if you can sense them, if you can intuit them, if you can find Absolutely. them located. Yeah. If you paying attention to your client and seeing that there's an emotional release uh, when you you're working on one in. area. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm an advertising for you right now because I want people yeah. to know. <laughs> go to your website uh, it's an experience yeah which, which i'll have in the description below but it's jackie stover lmt dot go daddy dot com but you do and lymphatic drainage you do I the do. Cupping, you do myofascial yeah. work deep tissue swedish uh energy a little bit work. of everything yeah yeah and and i just kind of tie it all together yeah i don't feel like the average massage therapist ever achieves that and that's not to impugn the profession because there's a tremendous value just in massage therapy oh my God. absolutely kind of the energy work without the, the philosophy without um even knowing anything about lymphatics uh a lot don't know about cupping um which i got cupped right here I'll show you. <laughs> still a mark still a little i'm bit. real proud of it yeah. <laughs> 
Here it um, is. <laughs> I've seen you meditate kind of when you're working. Yeah. Um, that's that's a powerful thing that that uh, visualization, meditation, focus, uh, that hyper acute attention gives you so much more information about a client that you can actually help them in ways they didn't even imagine realize yeah yeah Yeah, that's absolutely so that's where we got to get uh more people on the table although i feel like you work harder than anyone else in this building like what's going on (laughs) where is everybody today people need it that's you know i'm going on what my 13th day in a row here (laughs) you're a manimal you're a man right it's the indomitable spirit (laughs) that it is that it It is is. it really is you're an example for all the other deadbeat hippies around here (laughs) it's okay i don't think they watch the show good no no they're good they're good yeah but i i love talking about this i'm excited we get into the new office we're going to have a multi-purpose room a much bigger space and the plan is to not only do classes in martial arts, but, and I'm going to push you into it or find someone to do uh, the Tai Chi and okay. yoga Definitely. and uh, uh, group meditation, Tantra work, whatever we can, we'll have that space. And that'll be a big part of it because I think that's a big part of what society needs now more than ever for healing. So stay Absolutely. tuned. And uh The good Dr. Shulman and I thank you for being the super, uh, super smart co-host because I, 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 I just, I don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) You did so well. You did well. (laughs) That's one thing people like. If I don't know, I say, I don't know. You came up with a quote. (laughs) Well, I can always pull stuff out. You pull it out. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, no, this is like, it was really helpful. It's really educational uh, for me. And it, it's something that has really piqued my interest. Uh, be a great way to stay in shape. And I think that regardless of your age, there's different practices, moves, techniques, flexibility, balance, disciplines that will be well suited for you from childhood yeah. to wheelchair. I think there's, there's a lot. Oh my gosh. Of- and any good instructor is going to be able to modify. Yeah. And, yeah. and work with you. Yes. So give, uh, give Jackie a call and get on it, dog on it. Today's the first day of the Absolutely. rest of your life. I saw that on a bumper sticker too. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> I got lots of great bumper sticker quotes. But I believe you. <laughs> we're out of time. <laughs> so join us, All I right. guess, in, in two weeks, we're going to be talking about, uh, melatonin oh yes you no know, that's something i'm gaining a lot of one. interest and knowledge in lately so we're gonna uh have a, a guest a surprise guest co-host Ooh, but, i like uh, it i'm intrigued he, he knows a lot more about it than i do that's for sure so it'll be education for for all of us so Very until nice. then thanks again jackie yeah, thank you for having me and, yeah. and 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 be well i think it's this i think it's this <laughs> It's this. I just remembered from Karate Kid. <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> or Namaste. <Yeah. laughs> or Gesundheit. Any of them will work. Thank you. Attention. Thank you. I'm hanging up now.